They're taking Keith's eye and they're sort of repositioning the entire eye into a bit more of a symmetrical orientation, but in reality that's not something that you can accomplish with surgery. There's no surgery like that. You have to be super careful with Photoshop. Hey guys, Dr. Gary Lenkov here of City Facial Plastics in New York City. I'm a facial plastic surgeon and a hair restoration surgeon, and we're continuing this YouTube series of reactions to different videos, and here's one. This video is by Try Guys. Should the Try Guys get plastic surgery? So this was filmed a few years ago. I'm gonna take a look and see, we'll see what my thoughts are on this, okay? Is there anything you're seeing on your face that you would like to improve? How much time do we have? I've had way more insecurities about my body and physical than my face. My forehead's a little too big. I don't like my chin. My jaw is very soft. I do wonder if there's anything we can do about this. We're gonna have a consultation with a plastic surgeon, and then we're gonna have a Photoshop artist recreate what it would be like if we got plastic surgery. Yeah, you know, male plastic surgery is actually on the rise, so it's interesting that they're going in to just get, I guess, an assessment of what could potentially be improved on their face. We all have things about us that we don't like entirely, so we'll see kind of how this works out for them. I've I've never thought that I should get plastic surgery. It seems like most people don't actually need it. I'm pretty conflicted about this whole thing in general. I, I think uh, need is a really relative term. A lot of patients who come to me, they are very pretty and beautiful people already, but they have some insecurity. There's something, some facial feature that they want adjusted, improved. Also, sometimes the aging process takes over and they just want to kind of go back to how they used to look, at least in part. It's not that anyone truly needs it, unless, you know, we're doing it for a reconstructive reason and they're having a functional problem. But in terms of cosmetic surgery of course nobody needs it but a lot of people do get a lot of improved self-confidence from it and overall are I would say quite happy with the results my hair is going away right that's just something that I'm either going to need to take steps via surgery to fix or accept I see why this is something that I would consider in life yeah. So I actually saw a more recent video, it seems like Zach did go through with a hair transplant, so it's interesting to go back to this time to when he was, I guess, still contemplating it. Society doesn't demand that men's faces look as nice as society demands women's. You're never advertised as a teenager like, ooh, make sure you moisturize, boy. That's true. I think there definitely is a double standard there. I think um, there's more pressure on women to look a certain way. I think it depends on the community as well, and every different kind of group of people in different countries that have, has a you know kind of certain take on it on how men should look. The first time I went to Korea, my relatives didn't even say hi. They grabbed me and literally started pointing at my face to say what I could change. Yeah, I mean, it's South Korea seems to have a huge obsession with plastic surgery. I don't know why. It'd be interesting to go back to like the history of like when they became so into it. But I have heard that they have entire streets of just you know different plastic surgery clinics and not that different, honestly, from Manhattan where I am or LA or Miami. It's just maybe they. It's a kind of more concentrated on certain streets and there's a lot of pressure on young people to get work done And there's a definitely a certain look that South Koreans are going for for men and women And it's kind of a more feminine overall look So we'll see what Eugene says about kind of the pressures that, that he's felt growing up This is the real fucked up thing I'm a Korean American who grew up in Texas where there were no other Asians So I was already dealing with the pressures of being beautiful by Korean standards And then when I walked out into the real world I was just constantly bullied by white kids who said I was really ugly. Learn how to accept ourselves, but we can't deny the pain or the marginalization that we experienced, even on the level of facial beauty. Yeah, I mean, that's really well said. You know, people, when they see someone who doesn't look quite like them, you know, they're very quick to judge, and especially as children. And so growing up in a more diverse kind of society, like in, in New York City, I mean, it, it's a different experience maybe than if you're amongst a very kind of homogenous uh, society in Texas and you look very different. So I can only imagine uh, some of the challenges that he faced growing up. When somebody has something that bothers their self-esteem and you can fix that for them, oh, it can give somebody a whole new outlook on life and it's amazing to see that. I would say people's awareness of their own face is, is very prevalent now and it clearly it's from social media. You know, I've built this practice based on delivering tens. And if I feel like, you know, what you want is going to give you a five, but I know I can give you a nine or ten, I will say no. Do you think you can turn the four of us into tens? 
That may be hard work, but uh, <laughs> you guys are already tens. So you, you know, my perspective on plastic surgery, especially of the face, is really trying to target what bothers somebody as opposed to just telling them like, hey, this could be better, that could be better. There are times when a patient comes in and just says, you know, I, there's something not right, like can you kind of help me figure out what that is? That's definitely, you know, one type of patient, but I'd say most people have a specific feature or something that they've been thinking about for a while they wish they can improve on and that's kind of where I like to focus my efforts and and help them in that way I don't really like going around and pointing out oh you could have this you could have that you know because I think it's all about kind of how you feel internally honestly we all have features that we would like you know, potentially want to tweak but a lot of us are just fine with that and it doesn't really hurt our self-image and the way that we interact with others then I would say just leave it alone you know I think the answer should always be leave it alone alone unless it really bothers you a lot. Just kind of my, my two cents on that. But I do think social media is playing a huge role in um, causing people in some ways to feel less confident about themselves. But it's also opening up people's eyes to what's possible and what's out there and something that maybe they didn't know existed, you know, they were able to get exposed to through social media. So it's not all a bad thing, but there is some, some degree of side effect that is, you know, potentially hurtful to society and that people feel, you know, less good about themselves. Perfect male face. It's like a face that implies that you're muscular. The Hemsworth clan. Uh, really, any celebrity named Chris. The muscular look, kind of the, the heavier, boxier jaws, I mean, that's definitely one type of male look. There are also others that have a slightly more, kind of, a little bit more of a, a feminine type of feature. If you think of even like someone like uh, Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt, I mean, they're, of course, they're masculine faces, but not like, you know, like The Rock. I mean, it's a different structural build to their face. And you also have like the guys from BTS and, you know, some of the pop stars out there. Even like uh, Justin Bieber, you know, have a little bit more of a, of a feminine type of appearance. I mean, on the spectrum, of course. I mean, there's like the really, really masculine kind of heavier faces and then there's you know something more towards the feminine side so yeah there are men that fall along any you know along that spectrum and can be kind of handsome and good looking in their own way so there's no like one perfect um, look so you guys are representing a certain percentage of my practice who come in and say give me everything you got tell me what you see and I want to do whatever it is that you say and hold no punches I'm excited to find out what part of my face is shitty what part of my face is nice? He's got a thin face. I think he'd look better with a little bit of contour up on the high cheek. We just inject, essentially augment your bone, and in doing that, it will take away some of this long, thin look. Lilia, they pull your head up. I have no clue. Dr. Diamond was talking more about volumizing the lateral part of the face, but I think Keith uh, interpreted it as like a, a full-on facelift, which I don't think he was implying by his comments, but basically there are a few ways to add volume, right? So you can add filler onto the lateral cheekbones and that can improve the volume kind of of the lateral face and kind of build out your face a bit. You can also use a cheek implant. That's another way to, to do that. And also a full deep plane facelift and a mid facelift does pull the face out and does improve the volume of this section here. There are different ways to, to build out the volume. The prototypical perfect face would be a face that's symmetric and a face that's balanced. So there's new research to suggest that actually there's beauty in asymmetry and in asymmetrical faces. So when they've showed people the like perfect symmetrical face, which was really photoshopped, because no one's face is perfectly symmetrical, what people perceived as beautiful was actually not that, and it was more the asymmetrical faces. So if you look at even, you know, the biggest supermodels, they all have some asymmetry in the face and the eye actually needs that to perceive true beauty. When you make it perfectly symmetrical, it's odd and our brains don't quite understand that. The right side of his face, the bone is just smaller. Everything is smaller. It's not as wide. Even the eye socket is smaller. Everything is smaller. And that then has ramifications on, on the skin surface, the way that where the eyebrows sit. The two sides of our face are, are really different. And when, especially when I do lip lifts, I'm looking at the bottom of the nose all the time. And there's such a difference from one side to the other, like the way the ala and the nostrils flare and the sides and the... Ver so it's, it's really impossible to get, to ever get it perfectly symmetrical. And you can see even here for Keith, even like looking at his nostrils, the left one, it's a little bit taller, a little bit wider, and again, a little more flared out. And that's just because the two sides are different, and that's how we develop, and there's nothing wrong with that.
His brows are a little bit low and eyeballs sit forward in their socket. But it's funny because you say it's because my eyes are forward. I thought it had that effect because my eyes were further back. No, your eyes are way forward. Huh. Think of like a frog. <laughs> 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 now, as far as the nose goes, I do think there's some things about your nose you could refine, and it would be a minor refinement, it wouldn't be anything major. I have broken my nose twice. You know, a lot of people come in for rhinoplasty and they say, I broke my nose and here's what I have. But there's also just the fact that, you know, the nose sometimes isn't straight to begin with, and there are different qualities to it that might make someone want to get it addressed and, and fixed and improved. And so sometimes the effects are from the trauma that they've had, and other times it's just kind of how the nose has developed over time. A lot of people with his nose wouldn't be bothered by it. We make a little incision right under here. So here he's talking about an open rhinoplasty approach as opposed to a closed open. Remember, there's a little incision here that heals very well. Closed, the incisions are all internal. When I work on the, the tip of the nose, I prefer to do that through the open approach. About four stitches to close up, no one would ever see it, but through that incision, I can lift everything up and work on the entirety of your nose. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you peel it up. We peel it up. Oh my god. Yeah, I found that a lot of patients get grossed out when I mean, you tell them the specifics of surgery. So on one hand, it's good to educate and make sure people are informed about what they're getting themselves into. On the other hand, it's sometimes unnerving to patients, so I try not to be too graphic either. Now I would do the tripartite to give him better definition to his neck and jawline, which would be a customized implant through here. He's drawn out a pretty large implant. You know, a lot of patients don't really want something that drastic in terms of changing their jawline. Again, jawlines can be improved with filler or you can use implants. Chin implants are very common. They're combined with rhinoplasty a lot of times because when you look at someone's nose, they might feel like it's very long and overly projected, but a lot of times it's because it's not in good balance with the chin. If the chin is recessed or receded back, you can have that sort of um, differential between the nose and the chin. So a lot of times when you're adjusting the nose, you can also add to the chin and just create more balance and harmony. But he's talking about a pretty extended implant that also involves further back and more posterior along the jawline for the angle as well. So really building out the jawline and that can be a pretty big change for someone. So I actually sometimes prefer to try to do filler first and see if they like that. And if they do, then you can consider something more permanent. Right here to give you just a little bit of projection here. And even when I do it with my hands, it looks so much better. So much. So much. Will my wife like this better? Your wife would love this. <laughs> so I think Dr. Diamond's a good salesman uh, and how he's really kind of telling him like, hey, you're gonna look great and everything will be great, which is, it's nice to instill, you know, confidence in your patients. But again, you have to be careful about more like radical changes, things that are really gonna change at someone's entire look if they're not, you know, ready for it or you may not want it. I have thinning hair, so it's something that I've been working on. Yeah, we do hair restoration here. Yeah. So give me new so, hair. So, uh, Okay. okay, that's number one. Anything else? I would happily keep this. My fear is that once we start talking about the things a professional would change about my face, I'll never be able to look at myself the same way again. You have a weak chin and a weak jawline. The whole area is weak. And so, uh oh. The face right. should be broken up into equal thirds. And, and I would also lengthen and strengthen his chin. I would customize a full implant for him. People would be very surprised to find out how many celebrities have had something done. And I'd put it at you know 95% of people. He sees them over there in California, and I think that that's you know very true. I mean, when you look at these before and afters, and we've been doing some of those videos on recently on, on Kylie Jenner and, and J Lo. And they've all had work done to be able to maintain and, and to enhance um, their beauty. They just don't like talking about it. But, you know, at least we can kind of pick them apart a little bit. And the point, again, isn't to make them feel bad, but the point is to make others feel better about themselves to say that, hey, something can be done. If there's something that you don't like about yourself, you don't, you're not like stuck with it necessarily. Things like that are attainable, not just for celebrities. From personal experience, know how emotionally detrimental and devastating that can be, especially for a young person. I've met six-year-olds who've gotten plastic surgery. Oh, you need better eyes in it. That's really a jarring fact if it's true. Six-year-old, I mean, they 
it, they should only be getting plastic surgery if it's like absolutely necessary for some sort of reconstruction, God forbid. They should not be getting cosmetic work done. The body continues to develop and grow. For women, it tends to be up until about age 15, 16. For men, it can be even beyond that, 17, 18. So you really need to wait until the, the, not only is the face more mature, but the individual is mature enough to make a decision such as, you know, changing something cosmetic about their face. The only rare exception is otoplasty. Kids get ridiculed quite a bit about their ears sticking out, and so there is some tendency by, by surgeons to sometimes correct those prominent ears. Think like Obama. Some kids get really made fun of a lot, so if you can correct that at an earlier age, you can really kind of save them some of the headache and heartache that comes along with, with uh, being made fun of. Because the ears that are fully developed at a younger age as opposed to other parts of the face, that just take longer to develop. So it's kind of like almost like a unique situation with otoplasty or prominent ear surgery. Being both LGBT and Korean is super complex. There's really no way to tidily wrap up exactly how many factors are contributing to my history with insecurity. Is there anything you're seeing on your face that you would like to improve? I think I have a really large face. And I think I need less bone. This could, I think, come out a little bit more. Everything could just be like sharpened. The tip rounds out like this feels like it's it's huge so i don't know if that needs to go down i actually in this situation would recommend even less than what you're saying that width yeah a lot of people want that width yeah i find that in my practice people really want what they don't have and i've spoken to this before the easy fix that is very effective is botox a big part of my practice is non-surgical and we can do a lot of things non-surgical that literally take 10 minutes to do mm, but this really? is a, this is a big strong muscle here called the masseter muscle and you have a big strong one and so it's kind of like you know this has got some problems Dr. But, but, oh. but no but but, but I'm showing you the, diff the, right, the, the difference between a flex muscle and a relaxed muscle when it's flexed it's got mass and bulk when it's relaxed I'm so it's distracted right now doctor <laughs> <laughs> so Eugene has a good facial structure the one thing that I see that could look better is his nose I I would do a rhinoplasty on him that would involve strengthening the bridge of his nose and that's about all I would do for him. Yeah, I mean, I think the masseter Botox seems reasonable for someone who wants a little bit more of a narrowing here and that's kind of what he's interested in. And it's something that will reverse itself if you don't keep repeating it. And so you can try it once and um, see what improvement or changes you get. It also helps for TMJ if someone's clenching their jaw a lot. There's a fine line between just giving the patient exactly what they're asking for versus like using your professional judgment and, and having their best interests in mind as well, especially for permanent changes. It's been a couple of weeks. Now it's time to see how sexy I can be. Yeah, boy oh boy, on me there was a lot. The Photoshop artist has taken Dr. Diamond's notes and applied them to our face. I just saw it here, they're taking key its eye and they're sort of repositioning the entire eye into a bit more of a symmetrical orientation but in reality that's not something that you can accomplish with surgery there's no surgery like that you have to be super careful with Photoshop not over promising someone something with Photoshop and being very realistic with the changes that you can accomplish. So I only use Photoshop and, and image renderings when I'm doing rhinoplasty. And the reason is to just be on the same page with the patient because there's so many different nuanced changes that you can do to the nose and you want to make sure you know exactly what the patient wants. So every move that I make in Photoshop when I'm doing nasal renderings is something that there's a surgical maneuver to make that happen. It's not just like you're making things look pretty because you can show someone an image that looks amazing but if you can't deliver on that then people get upset and it's not fair to the individual. Now uh, let's look at the new improved Keith Habersberger, the most beautiful version of beautiful Keith. Three, two, one. <laughs> God, whoa, it, looks, it looks so weird. It looks like I'm trying to keep a little secret. It looks like a guy who came in to murder me from the future. <laughs> Somebody poured a bunch of water into my mouth and said, hold it there. Like he made my lips smaller. He got rid of my big old DSLs. He said that I kind of looked like a frog. This makes me look way more like a toad or a frog. Nice, strong Adam's apple. Whoa, the side view is hot. <laughs> Whoa, the side view looks good. <laughs> Woo! It's him, it just looks a little better. From the front, it's all like, who's that? But from the side, it's like, who's that? 
Uh, the changes we saw from the side view involved with the tripartite, which is ex which is reshaping the chin and neck. And I've also uh, reshaped his nose slightly by smoothing out the bridge and refining the tip. Yeah, I mean, I think these changes are reasonable. More subtle rhinoplasty, especially for the bridge. The chin is more projected. There's a little less of the submental kind of fad and I think that's a attainable, pretty realistic projection. Introducing Ned 2.0. The other In three, two, one. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I don't like it at all. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I was right all along. <laughs> I don't know, the more you look at the after photo, the more you normalize it. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting whether the work on someone's face is good or not so good. Forget about Photoshop, but like the real thing. And it could be with just fillers, it doesn't have to be surgical. People start to accept that as like the new them, and they almost want to continue to, like if it's filler, they want to continue doing that same thing to maintain the, their new look. And so I find that to be psychologically super interesting, because people might look almost like a caricature of their original self, and all blown up with the fillers and all that, but they kind of keep going back for more because now they have this new look that they need to maintain. So they normalize in a way. So I agree with Ned here. Surgical results can actually look a lot more natural than like filler, honestly. So you have to be very careful with, with the use of filler. And I think it's honestly being overused in our society right now, at least in the aesthetic world. Three, two, one. No. I don't know, I guess your profile is not something you ever get to see, so it can be a little more objective. Like, the front on, it's the face I see in the mirror every day, so to change it is really jarring to me. But the profile, it's almost like a work of art. Other videos we did, the results were very drastic, and it really turned me off. This is so similar that even though it's jarring at first, after a while you start to consider it. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining a person's self. I mean, you don't wanna change them so radically that they look like a totally different person. So that's something you have to be very careful about. Let's see the new Eugene. One, two, three. <laughs> so yeah, the only changes really that are being shown are on the, the nose and really from the frontal view It's very hard to appreciate a difference. So that's why I think he's going back and forth trying to figure out You know did anything actually change? That is the after photo What are you serious? You, I can barely see it Which I guess if you have a good nose job, it's not supposed to be that noticeable, but not even nothing else there's a little bit of um, increased projection of the nasal tip and slight refinement of the bridge, but really nothing else has been done. And I agree with Dr. Diamond, that's probably all that he needs. Um, and he doesn't really even need that. Maybe some of the problems I had with my face were not as problematic as I always thought. It's really tough because there's like how we see ourselves, there's how other people see us, and then there's just like you know, how we actually are and what we actually look like. Trying to merge all those opinions can be very difficult and confusing. And I think that's kind of where he's at, where like he has a certain way that he's kind of grown to see himself. But then to others, at least now, and especially in a more accepting society, he has very good facial features. And so he's trying to kind of marry those different perspectives. But in this case, this would be personal preference. Whether you made these changes or not, a panel of a thousand plastic surgeons would be mixed and split on which looks better. I think his face looks great. It does seem like Dr. Diamond is kind of pushing a little bit more in the direction though of kind of like heavier set, lower jaws and pretty prominent chins and I don't think that that necessarily equates to someone looking better. I do agree with the second point which is that it's very personal. You really have to go off of what bothers somebody. If something doesn't bother someone then don't change it. Sometimes you have to point something out. For example, if I'm doing a lip lift on a patient who's a little bit older, say 55, 60, starting to show some signs of aging in the lateral face, we only modify the upper lip and shorten the philtrum and now we create more arch to the upper lip. Sometimes you can create like a frowning type of appearance if everything else is saggy. That's something important to point out to someone in advance that hey, if we do this, this might happen. But then they still might not want to modify that other thing. Basically, he wanted to rip my face open, take my face off and switch it with John Travolta's face. Sorry, no, that's, that's face off. Oh, and he wanted to make my eyelids less lazy 
so that you could see my beautiful eyes. So that, by the way, is called ptosis, P-T-O-S-I-S. And I'm not seeing that super obviously in him. There's some patients where it's very clear that they have a lazy eye. I think his is a little bit more subtle, so that can be surgically repaired if, if needed. Oh! Who the fuck is that? You know, the hairline is back to where it was when he was much younger. That is okay, but you do have to be a little bit careful with lowering hairlines in younger men. And the reason is because if they've started to show signs of thinning and recession, the hair is going to continue to recede back, and eventually you run out of donor supply from the back of the head. So then you're looking into body hair transplants where you're getting hair from other places to keep up with the loss. The idea with a transplant is you want it to be something that is going to be with them for their whole life and something that they won't regret later on. Even though it looks better, he looks like how he looked probably 10 years prior, but that doesn't mean that it's correct from a hair transplant perspective. The hair restoration surgery is something that I've not only wanted, I've kind of been convinced I was going to do. Because I always complained about the, the big old size of my forehead, but now that I see him, he doesn't have a forehead, so my tiny head looks so tiny. <laughs> And now I'm torn in between. I hate both faces. I hate them both. <laughs> That's really what I look like from the side? There's not a strong profile. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so clearly better. It's kind of interesting to see the, the wheels turning and he kind of was like, you know, imagining himself looking like this other person and seems like, you know, he would be happier with the, with the new look. I never see the profile of my face, so I wasn't aware until this moment that I actually hated it. Oh, fuck. I almost feel like I'm bad for not looking hotter. Do we owe it to someone else to look better? Maybe some people feel that way. There's much more that, you know, every one of us has to offer the world and it doesn't have to be, you know, our beauty. You know, pe some people are blessed with just natural beauty and that's great. And if they share it on, on the screen, on, you know, I don't know, magazines with everyone, uh, models, whatever, the, whoever they are, actors, actresses, then, then that's great. That's like the role that they uh, take on in, in society. I think Zach has a lot of other talents. He's a funny guy. I'm sure has many other talents as well. And so that's kind of what I think his focus should be. It's kind of sad and and, and interesting that he's kind of having that thought about maybe regretting not bringing more beauty into the world. And that's not something I'm used to as a man, uh, to see a, a, a perfect face next to my own face and feel like I'm, I'm like letting the world down for not being hot enough. And I imagine that that is an experience that women must have all the time. It seems like this really kind of jolted him and maybe this experience inspired him to get that hair transplant. I'd rather look like myself than look perfect. That's a really good line. Perfection is, is unattainable and it is better to look like you or maybe some slightly refined version of you than, than perfect. And you know, the norms keep changing, right? So what we see as, as beautiful now might be different down the road. And we used to think that plucking eyebrows and having a really thin eyebrow was a great thing, right? Not that long ago. And now it's all about having a fuller eyebrow. People are getting these eyebrow tra hair transplants and, and microblading and all this stuff to bring out that fullness. So that will probably also one day change again. That's why like for some of my patients, if there is a non-surgical option that is a good indicator of how they might look with surgery, then sometimes we discuss doing that first. It's just that a lot of times there isn't a perfect alternative. And so then surgery, there's nothing that will tell you exactly how you'll look. But when there is, it's sometimes better to do the non-surgical just to kind of see if that's something that you want to change in a more permanent way. For there to be someone who can change the things about you that you don't like, yeah, I, I totally understand why people would do that. I understand why even I might do that. I feel like that cosmetic surgery is so ingrained in our culture, whether we know about it or not. When you feel pressure to get it outside of your own will, then a self-worth can turn really quickly into self-loathing. I certainly think that people watching should be comfortable with who they are and find their own inner beauty. But also, I definitely understand more why people would want to do this. That's exactly like my whole kind of MO when it comes to the work that I do. Exactly. 
exactly what Zach just said. I do wish that people were even more comfortable in their own shoes, but there are a lot of people who aren't, and if we can make a change that makes them feel better about themselves and makes them just more productive people, then I think that people deserve to have that change made. But it has to be handled with, with care and caution, you know, because you don't want to do something that someone will regret. You have to make sure that the person is doing it for the right reasons. But I do uh, appreciate what these guys have done, and you know, and I'm I'm so grateful that people are coming in, you know, to talk about their faces and things that, you know, we can do to make them really feel better about themselves. And that's really the ultimate goal. Really an interesting video to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If there's any other specific video or some topic that you want to hear about, make sure to kind of leave that in the comments for me. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. More to come soon. Take care, guys.